Hey, welcome to our finite help series. My name is Sarah. Today we're going to talk about sets. That sets with a T. Sorry, we're not going to talk about your love life right now. A set is one of the most basic concepts in mathematics. At the simplest level, it means a collection of things, which we call elements. For example, the collection of clothes in your closet, the species of flowers that are native to Montana, and the collection of all possible odd numbers can each be thought of as a set. Sets can be related to other sets in different ways. One such way is when one set is a subset of another set. This happens when all of the elements in the first set are also in the second set. For example, the set clothes in my closet is a subset of clothes in my house, because presumably my closet is inside of my house. Oftentimes we want to know how many elements are in a particular set. The number of elements in a set is referred to in your textbook as its size. Some professors might use the word cardinality. That's cardinality. Commonly, we just call it the number of elements in the set. The number of elements in a set is written like this. I'll unpack this notation for you later. Sets can be infinite, for example, the set of all odd numbers, but since this class is called finite math, we'll only worry about sets that have a finite number of elements. With that in mind, let's look at the following question. Target sells three types of geodes, amethyst, quartz, and calcite. These are each unique products. They are the only types of geodes that Target sells. They sell three times as many amethyst as quartz and four times as many calcite as amethyst. The total number of geodes sold last year was 160. How many amethyst geodes did Target sell last year? We can think of the amethyst geodes sold, quartz geodes sold, and calcite geodes sold as each being subsets of the set all geodes Target sold last year. To translate this into a math problem, we first need to assign variables to the things that we're talking about. In mathematics, it's common to use capital letters to represent sets. G is the set of all geodes sold last year. Now I'll unpack that notation from earlier. G is the label for the actual set of geodes itself, not the number of elements in the set. If we want to represent the number of elements in the set, we use n parentheses g. It's always n, which stands for number. Parentheses can be said as of, and g is the variable that we assigned to the set. We'll assign the set of amethyst geodes to a, the set of quartz geodes to q, and the set of calcite geodes to c. Now that we have notation, let's write the information given in the problem as equations. As stated in the problem, adding up the number of geodes in each of these sets will equal the total, 160. There are two reasons why this equation makes sense, and this is your extra credit. First of all, we were told that each of these sets is distinct. In other words, they don't overlap. In finite, we call this disjoint. Second, we are told that there are no other kinds of geodes that they sell. For these two reasons, the fact that the sets are disjoint, and the fact that these subsets make up the whole set G, we can call the set AQC a partition of G. The number of elements in a partition set is always the sum of the number of elements in each of the, subset, the subsets of the partition combined. Back to writing our equations. We're also told that the number of amethysts sold each day is three times the number of quartz. We can write this as the size of A equals three times the size of Q. And we're told that the number of calcite sold each day is four times the number of amethyst. That translates to the size of C equals four times the size of A. Now that we have our information translated into equations, we can start to solve. I'm going to stop saying the number of elements or size each time, but keep in mind that that's what I'm talking about. Our first equation, a plus q plus c equals 160, is our starting place. Notice that we can substitute the third equation, c equals 4a, into this equation. By doing this, we eliminate c from the first equation and get a plus q plus 4a. Now we're going to eliminate a as a variable. 
notice that we can substitute our 3q every time we see a. Doing that, we'll get 3q plus q plus 4 times 3q. If we simplify by multiplying coefficients, we get 3q plus q plus 12q. And then if we add like terms, we get 16q. Once we have 16q equals 160, we get to divide both sides by 16 to get q equals 10. Now that we have the value for q, we can substitute it back into our equation to solve for a. We'll use the equation a equals 3q. Plugging in 10 for q, we get a equals 3 times 10, or 30. So there you have it. 30 amethyst geodes were sold last year. This was a pretty simple problem, but its main purpose was to help you think in terms of sets and their sizes, as well as the concepts of subsets, disjoint sets, partitions, and other ways that sets can relate to one another. To summarize, our first step was to identify the relevant sets in the problem and label them with variables. We then used the information given in the question to create equations in terms of these variables. Our final step was to substitute and solve these, these equations to get the value of the variable that the question asked for. So there you have it. We hope that you enjoyed this video. If you want to practice more finite problems like this one or other topics from finite, go to our finite quiz. Here's the URL. You can choose practice mode or quiz, mo or quiz mode. Um, and it will give you helpful tips for getting the right answer if you didn't get it the first time. Thanks for watching.